you finally did it. You finally finished up that track. You bounced it out out of Ableton, FL Studio, Logic, whatever your DAW is. Now what? Now it's the next stage of distribution and also marketing. In this video, I'm going to show you my exact process of how I market all my own music, get it into different stores, so on and so forth. So first things first, the first thing I do after, let's say I finish up that track or that album is I go to Distrokin. This is my favorite independent music distributor. It puts your music onto tons of different platforms. It's super easy to use. And the reason why I do this is because not even talking about marketing yet, but touching upon it. If let's say I say to somebody like, hey, I just released my album, like this album actually took me three years. A lot of people usually say, oh, well, is it on Spotify? Is it on Apple Music? Where can I find it? Where can I listen to it? So by putting it on DistroKid, it sends it to all different stores. And what's useful about that is that allows me to say, hey, it's on all music services. If you want to do Deezer or Tidal or Audio or more or, or stores that are more rare or not as common as let's say Spotify, the good thing is I have this option. And what I typically do is I will usually send it to DistroKid, make sure I see this, right? This album was successfully processed and delivered to, stir, uh, to stores. That way I know there's no issues or anything. I upload it on October 22nd, as you can see, I usually will wait about a week. Cause I find with a week, it gets on more and more platforms like Apple Music and iTunes. It's usually like same day it appears. Spotify sometimes a couple days. Other platforms might take a little bit longer. So that way I can look at here and be like, okay, good. Every single song was processed. They're all in stores. Now I can start marketing it. The second thing I do then is I go to SoundCloud and I upload it as you can see on SoundCloud. So I just did this recently. And then that way I feel like being honest, I don't get that many plays as you can see from SoundCloud compared to almost any other platform for whatever reason. But I feel like SoundCloud, especially for EDM, it's still like a massive staple. So I still upload to SoundCloud. So my process, as you can see right now, is DistroKid, then SoundCloud, because obviously as well, the good thing about with SoundCloud, which I really like, is if I go here, I can download the file. I enable all of my music for completely free download on SoundCloud. And I know this is a bit of like a, a mini debate for some people, because they're like, well, I don't want to give it away for free because I want someone to buy it. But here's the truth. Overall, very few people are buying music now. It's all about streaming. Look at even with movies, everyone just goes to Netflix or Hulu. No one buys or owns, I, I might as well uh, say that. No one really buys or owns a lot of media now, which I, I could probably talk about in a different video, but a lot of it is streaming. So I highly suggest, especially in this way, I like about SoundCloud, to put all your downloads completely for free. The reason why is if you think about it, if someone downloads your song, they're saying, oh my God, I love this so much, I wanna own it, or I wanna use it for something. So maybe, you know, this happens a lot with me, I know, especially being a YouTuber as well, people are like, hey Mark, can I download this song and use it in my YouTube video? And I'm like, yeah, go for it. Like it's not in the content ID database. So I can do all this kind of stuff, right, when it comes to making sure that they're all free for download, whether someone, like say, wants to download it and just listen to it, they want to use it in some media like a YouTube video, maybe they actually are a DJ as well, and they want to use it in one of your DJ sets, I have this option right here available for them, so they can always download it for free. Now, the third place I go to, and this is kind of my releasing process, is DistroKid, SoundCloud, and then lastly, YouTube. In case you don't know, YouTube is the second biggest search engine on the internet and the number one search engine when it comes to any type of entertainment searches. And I don't know why a lot more artists use YouTube. I feel like a lot of times I hear about artists, you know, being like, oh, YouTube doesn't really matter as much. You have to do it. Just trust me. And a big thing too, I'm going to show you so I can pull up the folder. So I actually, so I do all my own artwork. And what you can see right here even is I have Vegas. So this is the album artwork that I made for the album, which is used, it, which has to be a square for distribution. And then I make a custom one just for YouTube, which is typically about like 1280 by 720, I think it's right to mention. Um, or excuse me, 1920 by 1080. So this one I actually bumped up the resolution. But as you can see, this is also very different than this. And I could just post this on YouTube and just have it be that with maybe like a black thing around it. But I think this, is more visually appealing. And especially on YouTube, this is now getting into like the SEO, which I'm gonna touch upon in a second. The click-through rate of the CTR is very important. So having a better thumbnail or something that jumps out at you more 
is better than something having something that's a bit meh, right? Which is why I make my own custom artwork just for YouTube. And then on YouTube, I then SEO every song. So if I go up here, SEO means search engine optimization. And what it really comes down to is how do I type something out, the title, the description, like I said, the thumbnail as well, for people to discover it. So as you can see, this one's called Zook. Now, in case you don't know, for this album, I went to every single day club, night club, and after hours club in Vegas, made a song about each venue that encapsulates that venue's ambiance and vibe and musical form. So the good thing is when it comes to SEO, I want to rank each song or each video, I guess in this case, for that specific venue. So as you can see here, I have Zook, Zook Nightclub, Zook Nightclub Las Vegas, because a lot of people search that, newly built Resorts World Las Vegas, right? I also have Las Vegas and Vegas, you know, pretty much everywhere. For this record, I went for a hard hitting, high energy Moomaton music record, because people search for Moomaton and Moomaton music. Now, if I go down here, these are all the tags you can see. So I talk about, you know, Zook, Zook Nightclub, Zook Vegas, Zook Las Vegas, all these different tags, which help rank the video higher for these specific keywords. So if someone, let's say, searches for Resorts, um, or resorts World Las Vegas, uh, it's been a long day, uh, no, I'm stuff done. A bit of uh, cotton mouth right now. But um, so if someone searches for Resorts World Las Vegas, there's a chance this video will pop up. They'll click it. They'll listen to my song. Now, the last thing I do is song trust. In some ways, this is not really distribution, but I'm going to include it on this list, at least for right now. The reason why song trust involves a lot of pros. Pros that performance rights organizations. Any single time, let's say your song is played, you should get money from pros and you can make a good amount of money from it. So let's say, you know, and, and this is basically performance rights and royalties. So if someone plays your song and let's say a store or the radio or basically anywhere you want to get the money from it. So I'll go to here and I'll upload all these songs. It takes sometimes a little bit, as you can see, they're still pending, at least at the time of this video, but I'll make sure to have them here. That way, any single time my song gets played, let's say it's on TikTok, for example, on TikTok, is a massive powerhouse right now for getting music heard and a lot of people making content around your songs. I'll make sure to have these with Song Trust. Song Trust will put them in a bunch of performance rights organizations and collect the royalties from them. That way I'm getting all the money from all my music when it comes to all the pros around the world. Now at that point, I know all my songs are in the places I want them to be. I use DistroKid to get them into all the different music stores. So regardless of which streaming service somebody uses, Boom, they have that option. I put it on SoundCloud, not only for plays, because SoundCloud obviously is still a massive platform for that, but also the free downloads. I then put it on YouTube, because YouTube is such a powerhouse of an entertainment search engine, the number one. And then lastly, I put it on SongTrust, so I collect the pros and all the rights and royalties revenues. Now the next step kind of depends at this point. Now I'm like, okay, all the, the music's in the right places. And I feel like when it comes to marketing, Let's say, and I've had this happen. People hit me up saying, hey, Mark, I really want to get better at marketing my music. What techniques do you use? And let's say you only put it on Bandcamp, for example. Well, marketing in itself, by having it in more places, just gives people more opportunities to discover it and listen to it. So that's the first thing. The next step I do, and this is what I'm doing, like I said, right now for the Vegas album, is I do promo emails. So I send this to a bunch of an artist that I feel like have a very similar sound or might enjoy it. And I could probably do a whole video about this. And each one of these marketing techniques, I could probably do an entire video about. But overall, what I would do is I would email an artist saying, hey, this is what I just did. So in this case, I'd be like, hey, I just released this Las Vegas album. I'll then put in a little bit of like a uh, a cool little tidbit to make it stand out. To so say, hey, you know, I just released this Las Vegas album where I encapsulate the vibes and ambiances of all these uh, Las Vegas venues. If you've been to Las Vegas, how do you feel about the song I wrote about each uh, specific nightclub, day club, and after hours club? Or something like that. I'll post a link, boom. So what I'll do then is send it to a bunch of an artist. My goal is for them to either check it out, maybe they use it in their DJ sets, et cetera, et cetera. The next step is then blogs. This is now where I get to more, as because promo emails, although it's marketing in itself, I feel like it's more just general outreach. But let's say you want to get your music featured, right? When it comes to blogs and websites, my best advice, and this is what I do, let's say with the Las Vegas album or any other type of album I've released, is contact blogs and web uh, blogs and websites that relate to the music in a way that's not musical. Now this may be tough because you may have just released a song called I don't know, I'm thinking like an EDM name like Jump Up or whatever. So a little different, right? 
But in this case, with the, with the Las Vegas album, because it's about Las Vegas, what I'm doing is I'm contacting all these different Las Vegas blogs, travel blogs, any websites or podcasts even related to Vegas, Las Vegas, nightlife, nightclubs, etc., etc. The reason why is the barrier to entry when it comes to those, let's say as opposed to EDM blogs, is way less. If I contact an EDM blog saying, oh, look what I just did, check out my music, guess who's doing that? Everybody else. Everybody else is contacting these you know, EDM sites and blogs, asking them to check out their tracks, feature their music, and what's kind of annoying now, and you may have noticed this, a lot of blogs, especially music ones, are saying, hey, if you pay $10, we will listen to it, guaranteed. If you don't pay us, we might or might not listen to it. And it's like, well, if I do that for one blog, and next I contact 10, that's 100 bucks just gone right there. With Vegas blogs or other blogs or websites that are not direct about the music, there's a lot less barrier to entry. If I contacted Las Vegas blog, very few people, if at all, are saying, hey, look at this song I made about Las Vegas. I did a song, for example, about Lionel Messi, the famous football player. And when I contacted a bunch of football websites and I contacted them saying, hey, you know, I made a song about Messi, a lot of them really liked it because guess what? No one's really contacting soccer or football blogs and websites about music, right? It was a lot less barrier to entry. So that's usually the next phase that I go to is if I have an album or release, single EP, whatever, about a given topic, I would do then blasting emails that just kind of boring, but you just got to send email after email after email on the blogs, websites, podcasts, sometimes even on Twitter. I try to find like Twitter pages, maybe that have like a good following, anything that relates to what I just released, but isn't music related. And then the last step, and again, a lot of this is just spending the hours of emailing is then I'll do a lot of outreach now to then the EDM music, blogs, websites, et cetera, et cetera. I think I usually say those for last because when it comes to a lot of them, you're just another dime in the dozen. I've noticed I get a way higher ROI, like I said, from all these other marketing techniques as opposed to just music websites because there's so much. However, though, there can be a big upside. Let's say if you do get featured on a massive one, like take This Song Is Sick, one of the biggest EDM uh, blogs and websites for music. If you get featured on This Song Is Sick, that is huge. So that's a big thing I'm gonna say, but overall, that's really my marketing technique. Honestly, I'd say half of it is making sure my music is in all these different places, and the other half is just sending those emails. And there's a bunch of other techniques I use too, things like newspapers, magazines. There's a lot more that I do, even like YouTube music channels, like Proximity and other ones are also massive powerhouses. I did an entire video about 15 music marketing techniques. I've linked this below in the description if you wanna check that out. Highly suggest watching it because that involves a lot even more techniques that I use, but overall, this is the main process. Getting your music out there to as many places in terms of stores as possible so people can hear it pretty much everywhere and then just sending those emails, doing outreach and getting music in as many places as possible.